the lighting in most everywhere in this house is just the worst. That's why I'm always standing in that one part of the kitchen talking. So like 50% of my videos are right there. I can never fix the lighting. And that's why I don't really film in here much. So we're going to see, fix this right now. Oh, Might've helped a little bit, but this is actually the shipping room right now. This is one of the last times I'll be shipping out of here and packing and everything. And we're going to be moving into the warehouse soon. So really excited, but this actually has worked out perfect. If, you guys, I wish I would have showed you guys how our process was before I came down here because it was so inefficient. We used to have to do, we have the shipping labels now and stuff, which is so efficient. Before, like six orders would take me like an hour because I'd have to cut out the label. Our printer was in the basement compared to where our shipping room was upstairs. So it was just all over the place. Six orders in one hour. Now it's like I can do six times that much. So it's a lot more efficient just streamlining the process that's what you learn about in business school and just supply chain and everything always trying to quicken up the process and that's what we've done so far but want to get into things i don't know I, i'm in one of those moods today where i can just talk and i'm not usually like that i'm not a very loud person or anything but it's gonna be a good video i think i want to show you guys a good shoulder workout that made my shoulders grow because for me i always had growing up a smaller chest or a bigger chest and smaller shoulders and you'll see that vice versa a lot. Sometimes people have, you know, genetically big shoulders and a smaller chest or a bigger chest and smaller shoulders. It's really rare to see that, you know, genetic combination of both. I mean, yeah, there's some people you'll see in Mr. Olympia, they'll have those both, but most of the time you're going to have one or the other. So I'm going to show you guys how I brought my shoulders up today and I just show you the rest of my day. So you use this bad boy for like three years. The first three years of the business the volume was low. I think that's what most small businesses are going to do all the time. You're going to start printing your labels on paper, cutting them out. You're going to use twice as much tape too because you got to tape the labels on there too. So the process is so much longer, but it's definitely a good starting point. But I think there's always a good time to switch to like a label printer, which we did. That's what this is right here, this little guy, but it's definitely powerful. It doesn't even actually use ink and it's just so much more efficient. Probably the process is five or six times more efficient. So. It was definitely a smart move. And then when we go to the warehouse, we'll probably get a couple more. So it's even more efficient because by the end, before we switched over and we we're still doing the paper thing and cut them out, we were just running through ink cartridges. Like I had to go to the store and get an ink cartridge every week and the costs were just getting so high. I already got a scoop of my orange flight and then you're going to put a little endo pump in there. We're actually already out of the blue rats. That is, that's by far the fastest we've ever turned inventory. So I'm gonna get more of that in, but also wanna expand the flight flavor line. So the next plan is to bring in a new flavor and I'm supposed to get a sample of cherry limeade in here soon. So I know that's a big trendy flavor lately. Whenever I go to Sonic, I'm always getting that cherry limeade or whenever you know any place has that flavor, I always like that. And I know it's, it's big out there right now. So definitely wanna try that sample out and I'll let you guys know how it is. Since I've been here, the weather's either been 100 degrees every day, it's been a week's worth of rain, or then yesterday and the day before that, it was like 60 degrees out, it was cold, it was kind of like dreary. Today, this is probably the first nice day that I've been here. It's like 80, probably a flat 80 and just sunny out and it's awesome. And I know it's gonna get nicer throughout the fall down here. And then back home in Pennsylvania, they're probably dreading it, it's gonna get freezing. So we're gonna have it good here in the winter. All right, so the workout I'm about to do, it was inspired by a guy named Greg Plitt. Life will haunt you for the rest of your days. If there's potential inside of you, which you know it's there, but you're too scared to tell anyone else about it, and you go on and on, get older and older and older and older, and the windows of opportunities start to close, and you knew it could have been given birth to, but you never did it, I promise you, it will haunt you. It'll be more, it's a living nightmare, dude. That fact that you have the ability to do something and you're too weak to fucking turn the key and start the engine on it. He's actually died. He died a couple years ago from a train accident. And a lot of people probably know who he is that I'm talking about right now. But the guy is one of the most inspirational, just motivational people I've ever seen in the fitness industry. Probably the number one person in the fitness industry. He was the one person that I always wanted to meet. And I was never really a big person that I had to meet, you know, all these professional athletes. I looked up to him, but... Greg Plitt was just one of those people that I would have loved to meet and I was never able to get the chance, but I'm about to do a shoulder workout that he used to do. And I actually used to be subscribed to his website. It was like, I forget, like $9.99 a month. You got free workouts, videos, things like this. And a lot of his workouts didn't work well for me. His chest workouts didn't work. His back workouts didn't work for me that well. Even the leg ones I didn't like, but 
The one thing that I took and was so effective was the shoulder workouts because I always had trouble growing my shoulders and I didn't know what was wrong. You know, I was like four years into training in my senior year of high school and the one body part I could never, just still never grow that well was my shoulders and I took his training. I thought it was a little crazy at the time and it was so different than what I was doing and I applied it to mine, took his workouts and my shoulders just blew up from what they were before. They were really small before compared to my chest. So what it was it was like 30 sets of a bunch of different exercises and all supersets. So going one exercise right to the other, back and forth. And I'll show you what I'm going to do now. It's He had two separate shoulder workouts. I'm just going to pull some of the supersets and exercises he did from those workouts and put them into one. So it's going to be about an hour and 10 minute workout or so. Really intense. So I'll show you guys how I do it. First exercise and superset, we're going to do seated dumbbell shoulder press and then go straight into standing dumbbell pistons, which is just right here. You'll see what I'm doing, but typically I'm gonna do eight reps of an exercise and then go straight and do another exercise, eight reps. And that's how he usually did it. It was anywhere between eight and 10 reps, but it was always just back and forth. So doing eight reps of seated and then eight reps of standing shoulder press, and that's gonna be one complete set. <sighs> Next superset is side dumbbell raises right here, right into front plate raises. 10 reps each, just going right back and forth, four sets total. That's one set, we'll do three more of those. But a quick tip with the front raises, some people might say that it's easy for them to do, you know, 10 reps of that. The lower you put your hands on the plate though, so out here, it's gonna be easier. Once you start bringing them down, it gets harder and harder. You might even have to use a 25 pound plate. So if it seems easy, still go for that 10 reps, but just bring the hands lower. Third exercise, we'll go rear delts with some dumbbells right into front raises. It's gonna be the same weight, 10 reps each. All right, so next superset, eight sets of the rope upright rows right into barbell upright rows. So these aren't gonna be right next to each other, so I'll kind of have to run over to the barbell on the squat rack, but it'll still be a superset. Four sets again. So next up is a single arm barbell press just right here with a single 45 on. So each arm will do about 12 to 15 reps. And since it's a single arm press, this is gonna be the only exercise in this workout that we're not gonna superset. This will be the final superset Barbell shrugs, I just do them on the Smith machine behind my back, I'll show you guys. Do 10 reps and then go straight into 45 pound plate. Same thing, 10 reps, another superset, four sets. I'll actually do one more exercise. Usually I'll finish on those trap supersets, but I'm feeling good. I feel like I can handle a little more volume. Just feeling good today the, and the endurance is there. So I'm gonna do three sets of Arnold dumbbell standing press and that's just a good finisher. That just kills your delt. So after that, that'll be the workout. Post-workout, getting some gummies in, gotta get those carbs. I love Sour Patch Kids, but anything like this is gonna work. And a lot of people have been asking me lately about my off-season program and 
what I'm gonna do for a diet, my macros, and I told you guys before, you know, when I was coming off the diet, what my macros were. 450 carb, 90 fat, and 200 protein, and that was like 3,400 calories, but that was just keeping me at the weight I was pretty much at, and not really making me gain any weight, and on Sundays, I was eating whatever I wanted. It was like my big cheat meal, but I decided the last couple of days that I'm not gonna count my macros anymore during the off season, because I think when I count my macros, I just get so wrapped up in it, and it kind of controls me a little bit. So I don't want to be doing that in the off season. As long as I'm in a surplus and eating enough, you know, making gains, then that's good enough. I just don't want to overeat or anything like that, which is what I did last off season. I got up to like 227, 228, and I was pretty fat. So I'm going to try to stay around 210, 215, not overdo it or anything. As long as I'm not going out to eat and just eating absolutely awful all the time and consistently, I should be fine. I should still be able to stay lean. I'm just gonna do it intuitively, so I, I just don't like worrying about it so much, and I think there's a time for me to count my macros, which is when I cut, and then there's a time when I shouldn't you know, have to worry about that stuff. And I'm at the point now where I can flip a switch and turn it on when I'm ready to cut, and I know where to start my cut. So that's what I'm gonna do. You know, People have different methods. People can count their macros if they want in their off season, but for me, I'm just, I'm never probably gonna do it again. It's the next morning right now, guys. It's Thursday. It's actually National Free Coffee Day. Well, I guess just National Coffee Day. And I remember living back in the north, Sheets, all the gas stations would always have free coffee. So I got to find some today. I'm not sure if they do that around here. I know Starbucks doesn't do it. So maybe there's places called like Sefco and things like that. But I'm going to go get some. I'm actually going to watch this sunrise. It is so nice out right now. I don't know if you guys can see it out here. But I thought it was always going to be hot here, too, and I could wear shorts and a t-shirt. I'm already freezing, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the workout, and I will see you in the next video.